Hey guys, Cam for 15, back at it with another video for you guys. I'm joined by my, joined by my co host, The Red Wolf. And we are here for the final episode review of My Hero. Final, did I say final episode review? No, no, no. That's, that's going to be next year. That's going to be next year, guys. Um, final episode review of, of season, season seven. Of this season, yes. Yes. Um, and the next year will be the last season, which has been officially confirmed. Um, and it will air next year in 2025, and it will be My Hero Academia, the final season. So season eight has been confirmed. It will be the final season of MHA. And then after that, there will be nothing to do with MHA anymore. No more toxic community. No more nothing. <laughs> and thank God. Listen, I love MHA. I'm going to miss it like hell. But if there's one thing about MHA I will not miss... I said this in my manga chapter review, the final manga chapter of MHA. The number one thing I will not miss about My Hero Academia is this toxic ass MHA community. That's and that and that speaks for itself. I, I don't think I gotta say anything about that. Anyways, uh, we got the last episode of uh, season seven, which in its case was kind of a shortened season because it only went twenty one episodes. And season eight is going to be probably much shorter than that. I don't know how how many episodes it's going to be. I think it would be pretty cool if they do 13 episodes because we started the anime with 13 episodes and it would only be fitting if we ended in 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. But um, yes. Anyways, um, sorry for getting this video a lot later. Um, we've been trying to do our damnedest to catch up with every single review we have. And we still have not done that yet we have like three animes we still got to review and uh this man's going out of town for the weekend so uh yeah we're sorry guys life is just getting in the way of everything and you know i might i might legitimately have to make a channel update video talking about all this stupid shit work gets in the way and yeah <laughs> I, I i i say you should do it literally i say you should i might have to to be honest you yeah. know Anyways, um, My Hero Academia. We get some, well, one, we get an emotional moment between Toga and Ochako, which looks like is resulting in the death of Toga. Yeah, that, now that's something I, now that's a death I didn't, was not expecting. Um, and then Armored All Might. <laughs> Never would have thought you'd seen it, Denzel. You know? I kid, I kid you not. I I was spoiled by it. I was spoiled about this. I was spoiled. I I did not I did not know like the context on how she he became armored all night, but I was expecting him to be an armor eventually and to and to take on all for one. But holy crap! Yes. So, do you want to get to the all might stuff or the emotional toga stuff first? Let's get to the toga stuff first because that's what came out first, obviously. So, um, after the events of the last episode, where essentially Toga and Ochako finally settled their beef, I guess you can say they're friends now, but, uh... At what cost? Yes, at what cost? Um, luckily they land, and the thing is, Ochako, even in this state of damn near death, essentially because that's what she's that's basically what ochako is right now she's on her deathbed essentially it was sadly the thing what was going to happen one of them was going to die and mm -hmm. shockingly mm -hmm. enough the villain was the more selfless one um mm -hmm. so ochako even though she's in this state toga makes mention of the fact like she's lowering the other heroes that were in the air due to her flotation uh quirk awakening and she's lowering them gently um not having them fall to the ground because then they would be all dying but um ochako is just basically losing consciousness she's already talked about how she feels cold and she feels like she can't move anymore and toga's looking at this and she sees what's happening with ochako and she sees that ochako is, is basically dying because she has lost she's lost a lot of blood right so then what she ends up doing is she ends up drinking some of Ochako's blood to turn into Ochako again. Now she can barely do it because she ends up like damn near like I think 
I think she even starts coughing up blood herself because um, she can't hold it. She she was using that, that twice cork really wiped her out, you know, drinking twice his blood and doing that. And that wiped her out. And basically, um, she drinks Ochako's blood. Um, she gets her she gets her mask thing and then she hooks up Ochako to her own body and she starts to perform a blood transfusion aka donating blood um now she says the thing about her quirk is when she's able to transform into somebody she she basically has their set characteristics everything about them so if you're wondering wait a damn minute what if they had different blood types and won't work well when she transforms into a chaco um and looks like she has the same blood type as ochako does so it's basically as if um the you know Chaco's doing that and actually they reference a moment in season five when twice did that for her twice turned himself into um or made a clone of toga and basically had it to where that clone was able to donate blood to toga to keep her alive at that point in time in the story now in the meantime uh toga is basically talking about you know about and kind of reflecting about everything she's done up to this point um she talks she kind of says like the League of Villains will met will you know I chose the League of Villains because that was the group that I affiliated with the most and I and, um, set out to do and that was the people that believed in me when nobody else believed in me and we had unique goals and then she talks about how but you broke through that and you helped me and you told me all these nice things and you never gave up on me. When you could have just given up on me and just took took me out and killed me as if I was some random villain on the street, but you didn't, and that's why I can't let you die right here. Essentially, um, is what she was essentially saying. Um, she apologizes for stabbing Ochako, and as she's given the blood, Ochako starts to feel warm again because she's getting blood back and everything. And then you just have an admit very i want to say intimate moment but a very emotional moment where then toga just lays down right next to her and she starts crying and you kind of already know what's more than like yeah that. yeah and you you can see it in a chuckles in a chuckles face like she's trying to go like you don't have to do this you don't have to do this and stuff but honestly i appreciate sure toga at least made up her mind at this point she just want she just wanted it to like you know i guess i guess one of one of my predictions did come true. Like w- one of the villains w- were able to redeem themselves, and that and that villain happened to be Toga. If you and really the big three villains of the League of Villains are Shigaraki, Toga, and uh, Dobby. Dobby. Mm-hmm. Um, and out of that group, which one do you think had the highest chance of potentially being redeemed? But it's more than likely going to be Toga. Shigaraki mm-hmm. kind of had his shit set in mind. And then, oh, well, Dobby, well, he just wanted to take his whole family to hell. Well, mostly Endeavor to hell. He was mm-hmm. fine with dying. Um, But, yeah, it was definitely emotional. Um, It was definitely emotional. Um, And listen, you know, the fact that this show, Horikoshi, made you feel for a damn character who committed all these murders and shit like that throughout the entire show's run and you're like fuck she's even though she did all that she's doing a pretty selfless act and she even says like maybe if i was different and maybe if somebody had helped me like ochako did sooner maybe instead of trying to you know take people's blood and essentially kill them maybe i could have used my abilities to help donate blood and give blood to others Mm -hmm. If if only things turned out differently yeah yeah and look you know her core could have been very useful if she was a good person she could have mm-hmm. been a doctor and just like she said like just imagine a critical condition person who needs blood she could drink that person's blood turn into that person and donate the blood right to him or who him or her mm-hmm. but obviously with her past it changed her trajectory as a person if there was that person that was maybe similar and really open to help like Ochako was into not giving up on her. Maybe if her parents never give, gave up on her and 
called her a demon and a monster and said, hey, maybe you can use your quirk for this. That could help. But mm -hmm. they called her basically a monster, a demon, essentially. And nobody welcomed her because of that. But Ochako, even though she had her issues with Toga early on in the series and their rivalry, it wasn't until season six till she realized, like, Maybe I'm going about this the different approach. Maybe there's more about Toga than I don't already know there is. And for, to for Ochako's sake, she managed to break through and get to Toga and change her. Or redeem her, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the fact that Toga is going to die, more than likely, well, is going to die. It's going to probably affect the Saki of Ochako. Pretty heavily. Is that foreshadowing? Well, you would think that would happen because well. you could say she saved this individual, even though it's a villain, and she probably that villain's gonna probably go to jail. And Toga does make the mention, like, the reason why she's also doing this is it's probably the best case scenario. Otherwise, you know, she'd probably be locked up in jail. Which mm. she would have been locked up in jail anyways, but you get my point. Yeah. So maybe it's her way of saying, you know what, let me do this. Because it's going to be a hell of a... I'd rather be dead a hell of a lot better than be locked up in a prison cell. So, yeah, and that's it. So, um, officially, the sto the Toga storyline has concluded. Mm -hmm. Sadly, a tragic way. Again, again, not a way I was expecting it to end for her, but... Wow. <laughs> now, we get on to the... All Might situation. And the All Might situation was absolutely that shit. Crazy. Yeah, I'll say. When those was first revealed in the manga, I was like, I can only imagine how this is going to be when this gets animated. And this shit lived up to the fucking hype. It started with, I am here, and then all of a sudden he starts getting equipped with all this with this badass looking armor, like Yo, All Might? Yes. Um, I think it's clear Horikoshi took inspiration of this from Iron Man. I can see why. <laughs> it's clear. It's clear. Um, he turns into this Iron All Might form where he basically is now able to do superhero stuff again and things like that. And it's funny because he then remembers a moment to when he told Deku, he's like, hey, don't remind... Don't rely on those um, support items too much. You know, you, you don't want to get too carried away with that. It's going to actually expose your weaknesses a lot more if you rely on that stuff. And I think all my reflection is like, huh, a time has come. So that's when you have it where you have this clash between all might and all for one in his youth. And holy hell, man, was this one hell of a fight. Yeah. Like, I, I have no words seeing this moment. So, All For One dishes out the first attack, and All Might actually takes some massive damage because of this already. But see, the thing is, All Might is like, I knew you would do this because you always like to send, send off a very big attack before you do something. Um, And he starts, he gets the upper hand on All For One, like, he catches off for one by surprise. Off for one's like, oh shit, I did not take this shit seriously. Mm hmm And as you and as you can see as the fight go, goes on, that all for one starts to lose his cool. And you know, he starts to like, you piece of shit. You're you're pathetic. you're just a worthless runt and all that stuff. Yeah. He he because I think that was a, a point where All Might was mocking him because he's like. You're supposed, you can proclaim yourself as some sort of demon lord. You got all these quirks and you getting your ass whooped by a quirkless individual. Wow. <laughs> so it's, and funny enough, that's part of his plan. He was getting him to get pissed off at him. Mm -hmm. um, now, Suga Uchi is just watching this and he's just like, I can't, I can't. Yeah, he, he, he he's, he's trying to, he's trying to convince the brother to, 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 to take it down because he assumes that this is where, like, uh, All Might attends to, you know, like, uh, take his last stand. And, you know, like, uh, where he's going to have his brutal, like, you know, 
death that Night Eye predicted. Yeah. But then as the fight goes on, uh, he... it's not going as how, how he thought it was. And, you know, and uh, the brothers are like, are you sure? <laughs> yes. Now, what is the one interesting thing that All Might is using with his armor? Um, is uh, Detroit smashes? <laughs> it smashes. So, if you didn't catch it, I guess like my co. Well, I don't blame my co-host. It's been like a few days since he last saw the episode. It's been so long, man. We, um, we're trying to catch he's up. Actually, you. So, some of the abilities he's pulling out is Class One A's abilities. Oh, like 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 the electricity and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. The acid one was the wickedest one because that man went purple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one turned purple, bruh. Mm -hmm. And mind you enough, that was the one attack that actually, if you ask me, did the probably most damage because it reverted him to get even younger than he already was when he started the fight. Because mm -hmm. he did, because then he had to like blow himself up or something like that and just had to re rewind himself instantly. I think so, yeah. Um, so that's the thing right then and there. I, I do think that was a cool moment. When I was reading this manga, I thought it was so cool that he actually was using Class 1A's, like, special, their, their quirk attacks, but using it in a way that his armored suit can be able to use them. Because it goes to show you, not only has Deku inspired him to keep fighting, all the class 1A inspire him to keep going. Because mm -hmm. um, he's like dishing out a bunch of stuff. Like he he obviously did the Kaminari reference. He did the Mina reference. I think he did a Jiro reference in there. He obviously did like a, a Deku. He, he did a Deku shoot style reference. Oh yeah, he did that. <laughs> um, He had an Ida reference because there was one part he went super speed. Um... I, he he had an Ochako reference in there. I think that's from what I remember of last watching the episode. That's what he did. But he pulling out everything, and it just goes to show you, like this man truly loved his students. He loved his students. Yes, he did. Um, now, even though All Might, you can say, is doing a solid job, he still get his ass whooped though. And the armor still yeah. is not keeping up with the immense power of All for One. To the point, like, his his AI suit is like, uh, my guy, you got, like, contusions and shit and broken bones. I don't think you should continue. But All Might's like, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and then that's when, you know, when he starts to laugh out loud and <laughs> that laughter. Yeah, it wasn't like his other laugh. He was like laughing in a way where it was mocking all, all, all for one. And he laughed. Uh, honestly, I kind of got chilled. I was a little bit scared. I was like, oh. Now I can only imagine how Christopher Sabbath's going to do when he does this part. But <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Also, too, when he got smashed into that one area on the building, that was actually the building. Um, that he met Deku in. He met Deku in when Deku told him. Can I be a hero even though I don't have a quirk and everything? Now, while this fight's also going on, we get a flashback to All Might's past. <laughs> well, not his past past when he was a child, but when he was like a teenage boy, you could say. And we actually see how him and Nana Shimura first met. Yep. So, do you care to do the backstory or me? Um, I guess I can start it off. Go okay. ahead. Go ahead. Okay, Nana Shimmer basically like a meet, meet, meets a meet, meets a All Might for the first time when he's like you know obviously like ho ho holding like some kind of stick to fend off some bad guys and and she was like, what do you what do you intend to do with how the perk buddy <laughs> with with just the stick and stuff and you know uh, All Might looks at her quite amazed. Who and... wouldn't be amazed at Nana Shimmer? She's a snap. Okay, but that's not, I know, I know. That's I not why, but yeah, I, I hear you, man. I hear you. Don't worry. <laughs> and yes, um that's when like he starts he starts following her and 
you know, he 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 goes on like I I, I want to be I want to become a hero and stuff, and you know, uh, Nana Shimmer like uh, has like you know had her doubts about him, like you know, like uh, why do you want to become a hero and stuff, and uh, all my claim because because uh, because the people need a symbol of peace, and you know, because people are constant are constantly like afraid of their of their surroundings of the constant dangers and stuff that's why that's why i want to i want to create that symbol of peace and hopefully create a better world with it yeah essentially and then you even they even cut out to like one of the landscapes in the city that city looked destroyed Mm-hmm. I don't know what era All Might lived in, but this still must have been like an era where, well, clearly All For One was, because All For One at this point in time was on the hunt for Nana Shimura, right? And again, the world was still, Japan was still a shitty place. Um, mm-hmm. So All Might lived in a very tedious time, and you can see why he lived up to be the All Might he was, to become the symbol of peace, to and have the smile of people's faces and things like that. Now, personally, he got that smile stuff from his master, Nana Shimura, um but he the, it, it you saw like okay yeah this is all my he wanted to be a symbol for others to look up and be happy to and know that no there will be no more danger and destruction there's gonna be peace here and you can kind of see like why he did that and why how, how he became the hero he was today only nana shimura morally enhanced that too and everything but it's it's crazy man it's crazy uh mm-hmm. And, and I did find it funny on Nanashima. It's like, kid, get lost. Leave me alone. I, you don't need to do all this. I don't want you to get in trouble. But she got in. But in a weird way, she got inspired by All Might because of what he said, which in a weird way is kind of a choleric correlation to how Deku and All Might first met because All Might was inspired by Deku when he ended up saving, tried to save Bakugo from the Sludge Monster. Mm hmm. Um. Sad thing, sad. It's just crazy. Now, Deku's still fighting Shigaraki, and he feels the presence of All Might. Now, maybe is this a potential death tease because he actually can feel the vestige of All Might fighting, and he understands that All Might is fighting all for one. And essentially, you have it to where the season starts to end off, where the two, well, one, the one previous user of All for One and the current user of One for All, they're both fighting their own number one villains. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and we get left off on that cliffhanger of to be continued, but we get the credits, and the post credit scene focuses back to UA, and it focuses on that uh, All Might card that Bakugo had, and that gives us the to be continued screen, or uh, you know, find out in the next season. So this only probably just teases that it seems like Bakugo might be coming back, because why would they show that card? I wonder. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But that is it of Season 7. Um, listen, man. Um, there's not... I thought Season 6 could never be topped. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Studio Bones deserves a round of applause. They's not only had a great season six, they made season seven ten times better. When I tell you, not one episode missed. They were all banger after banger after banger. You know you got a great ass season. Hands down, based on how season eight will go, right now, if you ask me, season seven is the best season of the entire series for MHA. Hands down. It makes me wonder what, what makes me wonder how the next season is gonna st- gonna go. I don't know how it's gonna go, but they're gonna go balls to the wall. They're gonna go balls <laughs> to the wall. I'm just happy that they're not doing what Demon Slayer is doing. I, I'm gonna be very excited for what Demon Slayer has to do with the movie with their final arc. But thank God this move that the last bit of my hair Gadamia is not gonna be adapted into a movie. Yeah, that's yeah, that's my only complaint about Demon Slayer. It's just uh, they're gonna put it into all, all into movies, but And three different parts, mind you, and 
who knows when one of these different parts are going to be coming out I think we talked about this in our freaking ep- episode review for the season finale of the last season of Demon Slayer. We could legitimately be damn near 40 years old and we'll get the final freaking Demon Slayer movie to end off the damn franchise. My Ergadamia made the smart decision. Let's just end it off in one final season. I think that's the best case. Hmm. That's fine. And plus, they're making, they're going to make the movie back. They're going to make, not movie back, the money back off the recent movie that they just got done doing. You're next. Plain and simple. And they're just going to end it off. And plus, it's probably going to be a shortened season. Yeah. From what you told me, it's just going to be the last bit of the, the final fight. Yeah, the final fight, which is really All Might versus All for One, and then Deku versus Shigaraki. And that's it. You mm-hmm. get your epilogue, and that's it. No more My Hero Academia. I'll be done. But um, overall, this season was great. I have nothing bad to say about this season. This season will... Fuck it. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 and it's of... rare that some animes get 10 out of 10s. Because you do have your issues with certain parts. But this shit was 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Some of the best produced, some of the best watch content I've seen out of MHA straight up. And lo and behold, I'm very excited for the final season of MHA. It's going to be a fucking emotional wreck because it is going to be the last thing of MHA ever again. Mm-hmm. Like I said before in my manga chapter reviews, I'll say it again. All good things must come to an end. So, uh, we won't talk about our endings and we won't get our tears and our crying out the way now. But it will happen mm-hmm. later. It will happen later. Wait till the final end of the last season, guys. <laughs> I won't be crying on the channel because if I cry, then I'm going to be a little bitch if you ask me. But that's just me. Bye. You said it, not me. <laughs> any, any, other, any, other, any other final thoughts about the season? No, just oh my god. I. That's so. I was I was in for a roller coaster when I, when I started watching this anime for the first time. <laughs> Yeah. I guess any predictions for season eight? All oh, Might's gonna die. <laughs> That's your number one prediction? That's one of my predictions. I, I, I can't think of any other ones at the moment, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyways, um if you guys like the video, leave a like. Oh, I also forgot to mention, um, since I can render this video a lot faster than my move the movie video we actually did review mha your next that shit will be probably uploaded on saturday yeah saturday i'll go up saturday either friday or saturday we'll see mm. anyways guys catch you guys in the on the next video stay safe out there um hit the subscribe button if you want to get more mha content on the channel with whatever is going to be left of it um and then also hit the subscribe button to my boy um i'll leave a link in the description below you can check out his gameplay videos i know i gotta catch up because i've been slacking yes yes you have <laughs> now i don't know how i'll get through that two hour video of yours i'm sorry that's that was quite insane you'll find a way dude you'll find a way don't don't slack off on me now man i'm sorry I'm sorry he will be getting budokai tekaichi 4 and he will be getting dusted Let's call it by the actual name, Sparking Zero. And yes, I will be getting it. Don't worry, Cameron. Jeez. And also, he'll be trying my custom made battles. And I'll probably post it on the channel to see how it goes. I wonder what kind of storyline he'll give me. I know, right? Hmm. Vibrian versus Videl for Gohan's love. R- <laughs> Now that now that's a storyline. Sadly, they don't have Brienne Shade Deja toes form in the game. They just have the fat ass in the game. Anyways, uh, yes, uh, that's it, guys. But I personally, I personally sent for Brienne Deja toe, not Rib Brienne. She needs to stay in the cute form, not the ugly fat form. Anyways, we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Peace.